Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. This is the Brew Brush Channel. I'm Hurston, and I'll be your guide on this journey to learning how to brew better. So this channel focuses on coffee, tea, and infusion beverages, and we use a myriad of techniques to get the best possible brew that we can. In our last video, we talked about brewing hardware that dealt with the push or the press. We looked at the French press and we looked at the arrow press. If you missed it, there should be a card popping up here in a moment and that'll allow you to go back and take a look at that video and bring you up to speed. Today we're going to be looking at the Chemex and the Vietnamese coffee filter. This Chemex is you know, a little more common. Most people have heard of it and probably have used it before. I know I have. But when it came to the Vietnamese coffee filter, I was less familiar, but it was kind of intriguing because Vietnamese coffee tends to be a little bit stronger and there's a little bit different brewing method when you're trying to brew Vietnamese coffee. So I wanted to make sure I offered it as an option, not to mention both of these devices are relatively inexpensive. This Chemex was probably around 15 to $35 when I purchased it. That's the range I'm gonna give because it fluctuates depending on popularity at that time and whether or not it's kind of holiday season. And of course they do some discounts from time to time. But the Vietnamese coffee filter was actually really inexpensive. I think this one was between 10 and $15 for me. So if it's something where you're looking at saving a little bit more money, this might be a better option and you might get similar results, not the same, but similar because of how they brew. So let's, let's dig into how they work. So let's start with the Chemex. So this particular Chemex, and I'll bring it up close and hopefully it'll catch the focus. Boom. I love that it has kind of this little dongle here that's adjustable. It's got uh, kind of a cork protective wrapping and that's so that when you go to pour it, if it's full, you don't of course burn your hands. Uh, this particular one has its own filter that came with it. And then it's got this spout shape, right? Of course, that's used to direct and guide your coffee as you're pouring it out. Now, there are no hard and fast rules, in my opinion, on how you're going to be able to do this. Um, I've seen instances where people have actually poured the grounds directly into this filter. Um, I've also seen instances where people will, will actually double up and use this with a paper filter. That will be what I am going to be doing on this channel because it makes for relatively easy cleanup. So little tip there. There are also people who have decided to use the paper filter straight into the glass. Now the challenge with that is making sure that it aligns correctly and you don't necessarily want it to sink down into your Chemex that could ruin your coffee experience. So I kind of like using this particular version with this filter. It adds an additional layer of security so I'm not too worried about, you know, that filter becoming oversaturated and sinking down into the coffee that I just made within it. And so momentarily, we'll actually take a look at what it takes to brew within this device as we did in the last video with the demonstrations. We're gonna do that here as well so you all are well aware of actually how I'm doing this. I'm a big proponent of making sure that I don't just talk at you and tell you about something, but that actually show you so that you're able to do it for yourself. And that as we talk about more and more coffees and different brands and different flavor profiles, you're able to follow along with your favorite brewing method, whichever that may be. Now this device, the Vietnamese coffee filter. So this particular one comes with a lid. I would imagine that that's a protective measures to make sure that, you know, your grounds don't come out, but it doesn't secure on there. So it's just something that sits the top of this particular filter. What's really interesting about this is, is that it actually has a bit of a, like a triple layered filtering system. So let me show you. Inside of this particular version, there is an additional filter that just kind of screws into here. And so I'm doing the same method to get it out. So as I take this out, you can actually see this is kind of the first line of defense for the coffee, right? So this particular thing, and we're just gonna try to catch focus here in a moment. Let's see, there it is. You'll notice that it has these holes in it, but the holes are not super fine, right? And so it's really important to remember that when you're grinding your coffee for this particular brewing method, you're gonna want more of a medium grind. Um, it's gonna give 
little surface area for the coffee so that it makes sure that it gets maximum coverage and can be extracted. So you don't want anything super coarse because it's not a, it's not like a French press or, or one of the other devices um, that uses a more coarse grind. Um, but you also don't want to use anything super fine because those holes are not very big. Uh, this is essentially the, so if we look at the bottom of this cup, and hopefully we can bring that into focus, you'll notice that it also has holes in it that are about the same circumference as the holes on that first filter option that kind of screws into here. So this kind of makes a bit of a double filter, which is pretty nice. I, I think that's cool. Like I said, I haven't even used this before. Um, I kind of wanted to save it for you all and really test it in real time. Uh, there's one other brewing device that I have like that and you're gonna want to make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the bell because I have kept this particular brewing device in a box. I'm really excited about revealing it um, in an upcoming video. Actually, the next video in this series, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, so again, subscribe. It's worth it, trust me. But back to the Vietnamese coffee filter. This is the kind of the last line of defense. And this is actually the, it, this goes on top of your cup, your glass, or your mug. So you'll want to sit this on top of it, and then this filter goes on top and it just kind of stacks, kind of like that, like a mini mug. Inside of here, of course, is where your coffee grounds go, and you want to make sure that you level those coffee grounds out before you, you know, start pouring in your water because this is a pour over technique. Both of these um, apparatuses will require a little bit more of a delicate pour. Um, and what I found is that while you can do it with a traditional kettle, you'll want to do it with one that has a more pronounced spout. Um, I will be using a gooseneck kettle, which is essentially a kettle with a relatively narrow but elongated neck. And we'll, we'll show you that, you know, in w another video that's actually coming up in this series that talks about the hardware, um, the, the first four videos in this series cover the actual brewing techniques or the brewing methods. So we're gonna look at the actual things that we're brewing beverages in. And then that following video is gonna be more of the um, additional pieces of hardware that we use to get the job done. So we have a couple of different kettles, um, of course, a thermometer scale, all of that will make sense. So again, you wanna make sure that you're, you, you come back and see us to allow us to elaborate on what it's gonna take to brew uh, the beverages as we're doing it with our processes. So back to pour overs. So the Chemex is very interesting in, in its style. Um, and one might even argue the Vietnamese coffee filter is as well. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a look at what it takes to actually brew with these devices. I will show you exactly what I'm going to be doing every time that I'm preparing to brew a new beverage, um, specifically coffee in this case, in with these devices so you'll know step-by-step step what I am doing. You can follow along or you can say, I like one method over the other and you just kind of choose it that way. I will say, if there's a technique or a tip or trick that you know um, that's far better than what I've explained thus far, feel free to drop that in the comment section below. This is a community of learning, so I am also included in that community. Um, I am simply a guy, but I'm also here to learn. So if you've got a better technique or a better way of doing it or something that you do that kind of helps you maybe even clean up faster, we're open to it. Drop it in the comment section below. I'll be looking out for that information. So right now we're gonna take a look at what it takes to brew with the Chemex. So as you can see here with this particular device, um, I want to make sure that I have my filter set inside of my filter. Now, I believe I mentioned that before. I am going to be using paper filters. I also have a reusable cloth filter. The thing about the reusable cloth filter, while it is more eco-friendly, it takes a lot longer to get it clean. I'm also worried about cross-contaminating my different coffees and I would prefer not to do that. I want to make sure that those flavor profiles stay unique. So in order to do that, I'm going to be using paper filters. Now, the thing about putting a paper filter in is that you have to make sure that you actually put the filter in first and then you go over it gently with some of your hot water from your gooseneck kettle because you want to make sure that you have a pretty solid seal around the edge of your, your filtration point, essentially. 
If you don't do that before you put the coffee grounds in, you stand the risk of having your filter move back and forth or shift around as you, you know, pour the water in there and that can yield not so great results when you're trying to make sure that your coffee has the flavor that you're looking for and then you're getting the consistent outcome that you're expecting. So I'm going to moisten the filter. Now I prefer to take my main filtering component out and pour out that excess water. Don't feel like you're obligated to do that. If, if you're comfortable with leaving just a little bit of water in the bottom, by all means, please do that. But for me, I'm taking it out and I wanna empty out that water because I don't wanna dilute the flavor at all for the coffee that I'm brewing. So now I wanna make sure that I pour the coffee in to the filter and I'm using a medium to fine so somewhere in there, because I, I want to make sure that I get pretty solid coverage. Again, you all, if you have a better technique or a better idea in terms of grinding the coffee, drop it in the description below. I'm open to learning. But what I'm going to be doing is just getting the coffee in there. And then I want to just do a gentle tap, maybe a little swirl, whatever it takes to get it as level or even as possible. I want to make sure that I have good coverage when I begin to actually pour my water in there. Because with this particular technique, I have to be very slow and you'll want to do this too and be very deliberate about how you pour your water in more of a circular motion. And because it is a pour of a technique, you have to be very mindful about getting all your coffee grounds covered. If you don't you'll have the water shoot straight through and you'll have very little to no um, infusion of the coffee in with the water so you'll want to make sure that you're very careful uh, from everything that I've seen and to be honest this is all based off of other people's kind of subjective way of doing things um, you want to kind of start at the outer edges and then kind of work your way into the middle slowly um, and then once you get a good amount of saturation with your actual coffee grounds, then you can begin to pour just a bit more water in and you can pour it a little bit faster. Um, and then you'll, you'll start to see that water kind of build up and then you'll see the coffee bloom. So you'll see a bit of a hump form in that coffee. And essentially that kind of gives you a guide that says, hey, you're, you're probably doing this right. Now, if you're not seeing the bloom all the way, fret not. It's okay, as long as you're getting some infusion in your coffee and you're able to see it coming out of the bottom and it looks like coffee, you're probably doing just fine. But you'll typically wanna see a bit of a hump on the coffee that's the bloom. And as you continue to pour it, continue to pour it, you'll notice that it might, it might hit a maximum saturation point so the water starts to rise along with the coffee. At that point, you may wanna pause, allow it to filter its way down into the bottom of the apparatus. And then once that's done, continue to pour until you hit the amount of coffee that you were expecting to get out of this particular serving. So that's what's required for this. Again, the beauty of having that external filter on top already allows me to lift that directly off and go right into serving and not have to necessarily get in direct contact with the paper filter until it's time to throw it away. The other thing that's great is that this really does make for a really easy cleanup, having that paper filter in there. Again, there is a cloth filter for those of you who are really wanting to be eco-conscious. I'm all for it. I have a cloth filter myself. I'm just telling you it will take substantially more time to get that clean and you run the risk of mixing flavors. If that doesn't bother you or if you have one particular coffee that is your jam, by all means, use the cloth. It's a very easy way to be more eco-friendly in this process. Okay, so as you can see, that was a relatively simple thing to do, but again, it does take a bit more time because you have to be careful about how you're pouring your water in. You don't want your water to shoot straight through. You wanna make sure you have even coverage and that it's actually pouring over all your coffee grounds so you're getting the maximum amount of flavor to settle in the bottom of the Chemex. Now, when we look at the Vietnamese coffee filter, it's quite a bit different story. Because it's pour over, you still get a very similar technique and look to it, but the way that it works is just a bit different. As you can see, I have my Vietnamese coffee filter right here and I've already put it on top of the glass that I will be using. That's very, very important. This is not something that you wanna prepare off on the side and then try to put on at the end. It'll cause a really big mess. Once it's on top of your glass or mug, then you'll wanna take your coffee grounds and put them in there. This particular device, like I said before, looks for coarse to medium, uh, preferably more, you know, preferably closer to medium. 
Um, but coarse to medium is what you're shooting for um, so that you get the right type of infusion with the coffee. Again, this is pour over, so this is not going to set. It's gonna have a relatively quick process. So medium probably makes significantly more sense than more coarse. You don't wanna to go too fine or ultra fine because remember those filtration holes are too large and it'll allow too much of the coffee to come through and then you'll get you know sediment in the bottom of your glass and most people, unless that's your jam, but most people don't like that. So you'll wanna make sure that you're, again, pouring that water evenly over the coffee. And as it rises, you're giving it a little bit of time to settle and then you continue to pour. And you'll essentially just continue to pour until you get your desired serving size or you know, you've run out of space inside of your glass or mug. Let it continue to drip until it completes the process. You can take it out and you can actually use the little cap that came on the version that I've put in the description below and put that underneath if you wanna catch any residual coffee or just have like a paper towel or a saucer nearby to put it on just to make sure that you're not uh, causing a, a bit of a mess wherever you are. And then you can actually go ahead and drink your beverage. So it's pretty cool in that it actually brews on top of the glass. You don't have to take it from a separate device and pour it into something. It's already there. And I think that gives it a bit of an advantage. The other thing that's very cool is that this entire device is made out of stainless steel, at least the one that I purchased. So that gives it a little bit more rigidity. It's a little more sturdy, but it's definitely a lot easier to clean. And so these are the type of things that I look for when I'm looking at different techniques. I would prefer them be very easy to clean. But if they're not easy to clean, I would hope that it even has kind of a cool way of brewing. And I'm telling you all, we do have a very cool method of brewing that'll actually be coming up in the next video in this series. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell to make sure that you're notified so when that video drops, you're able to actually see the other method that I'm talking about. And I, I cannot stress enough how excited I am about showing you all this particular device. So here we cover pour over technique. The next that we're going to, to take, the next type of devices that we're gonna take a look at are more like pull devices, pull. So it starts with um, uh, water at a lower point, the coffee is at a higher point, and then it pulls that coffee up. In some cases, it descends. In other cases, it just hangs out. So we're gonna take a look at pulling extraction devices in the next video in this series. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you found a new technique and you like it and you think, hey, this might be something I'm gonna try out, comment below. Let me know which one of these devices are you going to try next. Have you heard of the Chemex? Have you heard of the Vietnamese coffee filter? I'm very curious to know if you've heard of either of these devices because like I said before, I knew about the Chemex. The Vietnamese coffee filter was something that was completely new to me. So I'm very excited to go along on this journey and brew things in this method just to see what the outcome is because I haven't tried it yet. This is one of those things that I wanted to say just for the channel on launch. So I hope that you learned something here today, that you feel empowered to use one of these techniques to actually brew something, whether it be at home or at work or at both in the case of quarantine, or that it's something that you are able to teach someone else. We wanna make sure that not only do you learn it, not only do you feel empowered to use it yourself, but you also feel encouraged to teach someone else how to do it. Because like I said before, we're building a community and we wanna make sure that everyone is along for the ride and has the ability to understand what it is that we're doing. So by all means, if it's somebody out there that you're trying to teach how to do this and it's a little bit confusing, Invite them to come to the channel and check things out. I'll make sure to break it down as best as I possibly can. And then with, with the words that I'm using and the strength of the community, I'm sure that will help bring some clarity to whatever it is someone wants to learn. Because in all of this, we wanna make sure that we are brewing better. Peace.